The Veiled Priest, the Archbishop of the Void, Lord of the Red Crits, King of Headshots, and the Protector in the Dark shielding you from the terrors beyond the Veil. Hey there guys, gals, and non-binary pals, my name is Zenosfire, and this is Haro. Rap, tap, tap. If at the end of this video you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below or swing by my Twitch chat at twitch.tv slash Zenosfire, and I'd be happy to give you a hand with any questions that you might have. Before we get sunk into the nitty gritty of the abilities in the build, let's first take a look at Haro and Haro Prime stats and differences between the two and how to get one of your very own. At max rank and unmodded, regular Haro has 185 armor, 150 energy, 370 health, 555 shields, and a sprint speed of 1.0. Like all Prime frames, Haro Prime has a bit of a boosted stat line with 185 armor, 190 energy, 370 health, and 740 shield, and a sprint speed of 1.0. So not a major difference between the two, but trust me when I say that every little bit counts, especially those extra shields. Getting your hands on Haro is a little bit more difficult than other frames, but be patient, it's totally worth the work. Firstly, the main blueprint comes from the spectacular story quest Chains of Haro. Once you finish the quest, you'll receive an email from the Lotus with Haro's main blueprint. If you've already done Haro's quest and for some reason missing the main blueprint, you can buy a copy of it from Cephalon Samaris at any of the main relays for 50,000 reputation. Haro Chassis is probably the first piece you will receive. It has a 3% drop chance from any enemy in any Voidfisher mission. As these missions are one of the most popular ways to earn Platinum, and the main way to get Prime weapons or frames, you'll definitely get this part in no time. Haro Neuroptics and Systems have a few different farming methods, but I suggest farming the Kuva Fortress Survival Mission. Both parts come from Rotation C and have a fairly good drop rate, so you should be able to get it in short notice. Bonus points as you'll be farming some Kuva at the same time, which is a major endgame resource. Don't forget that Rotation C is at every 20 minute mark in survival missions, so be sure to play around the timing of 20, 40, or 60 minutes. It's not that difficult of a mission to complete, and you're very likely to get a pickup group for it due to it being one of the main Kuva farming locations. Haro Prime can be unlocked by opening relics in Voidfisher missions or by trading with your fellow Tenno. I've linked the Haro Prime wiki page in the description, so be sure to check that out for the most up-to-date list of Haro Prime's current relics, availability, and vaulted status as it does change from time to time. With that out of the way, let's peer into Haro's passive and abilities. Before that, just a quick note for newer players, Regular Haro and Haro Prime have the exact same passive and abilities, and all of his abilities benefit from ability efficiency. Haro's passive is short and sweet, but amazing. He has double the maximum capacity for overshields than normal, and he starts every mission with full energy. This immediately leads us to think that Haro is a shield tank rather than armor or health tank, so keep that in mind. Haro's first ability is Condemn. When you cast this ability, you'll send out a cone wave of restricting chains that will tie down any enemy it hits and any enemy within one meter of you. This immobilizes them and gives you a good chunk of shields or overshields for each enemy hit by the wave. It is especially useful if you're looking to maximize headshots, as this will lock up most foes with their heads particularly exposed. This will be super important with how his other abilities function, so keep this in mind. A bit of an interesting trick that Condemn has is that it's a one-handed action, meaning that it can be cast while firing or reloading your gun, or while doing other movement actions. Also, this ability will lock down most elite mobs or mini-bosses, unlike some other crowd control abilities. The amount of shields you get per enemy hit is based on your ability strength, the duration of the crowd control is based on ability duration, and the distance the wave will travel and the width of the wave are both affected by ability range. Condemn's Augment is called Tribunal, which works directly with his second and third abilities. Any enemy that is affected by Condemn's crowd control will let your allies activate Penance and Thurbel's abilities at full strength when they're killing those crowd controlled enemies. This is a fantastic mod that you should definitely check out and keep it in mind when we're talking about those other two abilities. Speaking of, let's talk about the second ability, Penance. Penance sacrifices all of your current shields for a ton of bonuses for you. You get an attack rate increase, which also affects both melee and ranged weapons. You get a reload speed increase. And you also have a percentage of any damage that you deal will heal yourself and allies within an area around you. Even better, when you first cast the ability, you'll also get healed. 
making this a great emergency heal if you need it. Penance will last for quite a long time with no mods, and the best part of this is that you can add on extra time by recasting it. This will stack the remaining duration with the new duration. An important note on this though is that the duration of the buff is based on the amount of shields that you sacrifice. If you only have your regular shields, the duration will be relatively low, but if you buff up your shields with Condemn, it'll be significantly longer. Penance's attack and reload speed increase, and the amount you heal is affected by ability strength. The base duration and the duration received per shield sacrifice is affected by ability duration. Ability range mods have no effect on penance, but anything that will increase your affinity range will also increase its range. Haro's third ability is Thurible. This ability drains your energy for every second that it's being channeled. When you stop channeling it, either by recasting it or when you run out of energy, you will receive a buff that gives you and your allies energy back whenever you kill someone. Even better than that is when you kill an enemy with a headshot, you get quadruple the energy back. Starting to see the synergies here yet? Oh, a very important thing about Thurble is that like Penance, you and your allies only get energy when you kill someone, unless you're using Condemn's Augment Tribunal. Thurble's energy conversion rate is affected by ability strength, the duration of the buff is affected by ability duration, and the radius in which allies receive energy back is affected by ability range. Thurble does have an augment called Warding Thurble. This makes it a bit more of a supporting ability as it will grant allies within the range of the ability a damage reduction buff when you're channeling it. When they take damage during the casting, they'll also receive energy back as well. The damage reduction and the amount of energy that you get back is affected by ability strength. Haro's fourth ability, Covenant, is where things really start coming together and makes him the Lord of the Red Crits. When you cast Covenant, you and all allies around you become invincible, and any damage you take is absorbed. You can see a little UI element there on your screen for how much damage has been absorbed, which is super important for this next part. The amount of damage you take is then converted into extra crit chance for a maximum of 50% more crit for body shots. This also buffs your allies' weapons too. However, like Thurible, it's quadrupled when you get headshots for a brutally strong grand total of 200% extra crit. It's important to say that you cannot recast the ability during the duration of the buff, so if you got a low crit amount or if you need the invincibility again, you'll need to wait until it expires for you to recast it. A trick, however, with this is that if you throw yourself off the map and respawn, the buff will be gone which then allows you to recast it immediately. But this will also get rid of any other buffs you have, so use it wisely. Okay, so we're gonna need to have a little bit of a sidebar discussion here to bring you all up to speed of how crits work in Warframe. I'm not gonna get into all of the details here in this video because it's going to be a video of its own later, make sure you're subscribed, but basically you have four types of crits in the game. Yellow, orange, red, and above red. Yellow are your basic crits and you'll need above 100% crit chance to get orange crits, over 200% crit chance to get red crits, and 300% chance or greater to have a guaranteed red crit, aka above red. For each level, you increase the amount of damage you deal with the crit by a massive amount. So while you may only be getting yellow crits of around 10,000, the red crits will be hitting for well over a million, which is kind of insane. I've linked the wiki article for crit hits in Warframe below, so make sure to give that a read for more information. Let's also take a quick second to explain how Covenant works into the crit formula of Warframe. Covenant is what's known as an additive modifier, meaning that it just adds a flat 50% or 200% crit chance to your weapon. So if you have 120% crit chance on your weapon with mods equipped, and then you get a headshot, your weapon actually has 320% crit chance. Coming back to Covenant, the multiplier in which absorbed damage is converted into crit chance is affected by ability strength. The duration of the invincibility and the buff is affected by ability duration, and the range of the buff is not affected by ability range mods, but is based on your affinity range. Covenant's Augment, Lasting Covenant, increases the duration of the buff for each headshot kill you get during the buff's duration. The amount of the duration increased is affected by ability duration mods, so in case it wasn't painfully clear, Haro is all about those boom headshots. Now with all of the preaching out of the way, let's get into build concepts and my personal build as well. Unlike other Warframes, Haro's mods and build is just as important as the weapons that you bring with him, 
so we're also going to need to go over weapon choices as well in this video. For Haro, what do you think is the most important thing in a weapon? Crit chance or crit multiplier? If you guessed crit chance, guess again actually. The crit multiplier is the most important thing for Haro. Since he gives crit chance to all weapons with Covenant, it's more important to look for the highest possible crit multiplier to really get the most out of Haro. For instance, one of the best secondary weapons in the game for Haro is hands down the Nucor or Kovu Nucor, which have an insanely bad crit chance, but has the highest crit multiplier in the game of all weapons. This will lead to this little weapon to dish out some of the highest damage in the game when it crits. Now, all of that said, if you have a weapon that has a good crit chance and a better than average crit multiplier, then go for it, 100%, especially if it's a weapon you enjoy using. Personally, my golden rule is to look for a weapon with a moderate crit chance of around 20% base and a crit multiplier of 2.3 or higher. This should do nicely as a start point for looking for good weapons to use with Haro, be it primary, secondary, or even melee. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's talk about build concepts for Haro specifically. First things first, this isn't the be-all and end-all of build possibilities. It's just a good place for you to start with and to build up from and to adapt to your own playstyle. I like to have highly versatile and well-rounded builds, so that's what we're going to focus on for today. With that out of the way, let's take a look at how I like to approach Haro from a beginner's standpoint, and then we'll also take a look at my personal endgame build. While discussing the abilities, we saw that Haro benefits from ability strength, duration, and range. However, strength and duration are definitely more impactful with the build, while range is more for the quality of life improvement for Condemn. Now, all of that said, keep in mind that Haro's abilities don't really rely on mods as much as other frames, and are very much based on personal preferences. For instance, if you're really on top of ability durations and can keep a good mental track of the timing, then use less ability duration and more strength. But if you're like me and get easily distracted from timings, then throw on more duration. Haro is extremely flexible, so keep that in mind and try out different combinations, augments, and auras to fit your own playstyle. As we talked about at the start of the video, Haro is a shield-focused frame, but due to his passive doubling his overshield cap, we surprisingly don't need to buff up his shields at all due to the way his first ability, Condemn, works. With that in mind, I personally like to throw on a Vitality to boost up his health and to give you a little bit more wiggle room in the survivability department. This gives me just that little bit more time to cast Condemn to get my shields back up when they do eventually break. Here's what I would suggest you start with for strength, duration, and range mods. For ability strength, I like to run Intensify, Augur Secrets, and Power Drift. For ability duration, continuity, and either Constitution or Augur Message, depending on which you own, and if you have enough energy on your frame for. And for ability range, I personally go with just a stretch. However, you can also throw on an Augur Reach if you feel like you need a little bit more range. You can also definitely throw on some ability efficiency as well if you'd like, but since we can regenerate energy on our own, I find that a flow is more impactful than an efficiency mod due to Haro's passive and thermal. And now for my personal build. Remember newer players, this is an expensive build that requires a lot of forma, a lot of endo, and honestly a lot of time. Don't think that this is easy to obtain right away and is instead something that you should aim for in a more long term. I like to run both Umbral Intensify and Umbral Vitality for the set bonus and extra health and strength over the regular versions, and I've in fact added two Umbral Forma for this build. Of course, I've added an adaptation for extra survivability as well. Prime Flow is amazing for the preparation passive of Haro, so that's what I like to go with rather than any ability efficiency mods. I find that Prime Continuity and Augur Message is more than enough duration for me, but I do have enough room to put on a constitution if I feel like I really want that extra 4% duration. And stretch is all I find I need for my ability range. I like to run Blind Rage on my build as I really enjoy that massive boost to my strength, and the negative efficiency is dealt with by using Thurbal. This is very much a flex spot for me and I'll swap it out for an augment every once in a while depending on what I'm doing. For the Aura slot, I like to run Corrosive Projection, as it's just a flat DPS increase for my weapons, but put on whatever works best for you and your playstyle. However, I would personally highly recommend a Prime Sure-Footed in the Exilus slot, as that quality of life improvement of ignoring knockdowns and staggers is just too good to pass up on. So there we have it everyone. What do you think of Haro now that you know just that little bit more about him? Is he on your list of favorite frames, or now added to the list of must-tries? Let me know down below. 
Also, if you liked the video, a subscribe and a like really do help out little guys like me grow, and it would be super appreciated. I stream over at twitch.tv slash Xenosphere, so feel free to drop by, say hi, and ask any questions that you might have. I'd be happy to help, even if I'm playing another game at the time. But until next time, be good to each other, and be safe. See you soon.